Welcome to Going for the Green and Happy Plaid Week. I'm Brad Thomas here with Denny Carter, and this week we will breaking down our favorite bets and plays for the RBC Heritage. So, Denny, before we get into any breakdowns, yeah. uh, as many know, you know, Scotty was seen on the 19th hole wearing a green jacket in the same outfit he wore. So, presumably, maybe did not go back home to his wife. But the question I need to ask you, Denny, I, I know you're a married man with children. Yeah. If you are playing the Masters, I don't care if you're leading or mm -hmm. you're fighting with the cut line. Your wife texts you, hey, I'm going into labor. Would she want you to withdraw from the tournament? I'm I'm on the next flight. I'm I'm running away from the fairway. It, 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 it doesn't matter where I am. I'm running away from the fairway. I'm getting there as soon as possible. Okay, so I do think that he his priorities were right. Now I will say I was a little surprised to see Scotty hanging out with the boys at the 19th <laughs> hole uh, after the Masters when he had been talking about I got to get home to my wife who's very pregnant who's due any minute now. I I don't know if that would fly for most you know for most couples, but uh, to each his own I guess. I was so shocked. I was like, no way. The man didn't even change his outfit. Yeah. And someone said, well, he probably could have just, you know, had his wife take the picture. She was probably there, but whatever, man, let's get into the tournament. Um, I'm excited about this one because not only is it the tournament after a major where we cashed a ton of tickets, Bryson DeChambeau top 10. We had Scotty Scheffler outright. You did well with your selections as well in the DFS market, but this is a signature event the rbc heritage played at harbortown golf links scotty scheffler once again going off around plus 400 with xander shoffley coming up next at plus 1200 we have ludwig oberg at 14 to 1 and we have rory malcroy 14 to 1 as well i'm gonna start at the top of the board and i feel kind of like grimy being the kind of golf better who's going back to back weeks betting on one of the tournament favorites a guy in that top four market but Let's not forget the week before that I bet on Akshay at 60 to one. So I do have some long shots in my repertoire. That's right. Maybe not so much this week. And I'm going to go with um, Mr. Lubick Oberg himself. Before the Masters or during the Masters buildup, we talked about how impressive Oberg has been. Only two golfers um, had, had been gaining two plus strokes uh, over 60% of the time to the field. And that was Scotty Scheffler and Lubick Oberg. Then you look to 44 strokes at 25% of the time, Scotty Scheffler, Lubick Oberg. I really did think the Masters debutante would struggle. I was like, this guy's going to go out there. He's not going to play well. And little did we know, he's just inching closer and closer to that green jacket. He got probably a little too over aggressive at Amen Corner, mm -hmm. but he, he, I mean, he impressed so much. I don't even really need to talk about how his last five events, he's been gaining strokes off the tee or how he's a perfect course fit for a guy who's accurate and great on approach. I just need to talk about how good this guy is as a golfer. I think he's going to be a multiple major champion. And you can't say that about a lot of guys in this 14 to maybe even the $25 uh, dollar range. And mm -hmm. I, I like Oberg and I like his price. I do too. I like him as, as a DFS player. I do think he's going to be very popular after he caught people's attention last week, the general public's attention, I should say. I mean, DFS, golf DFS, sickos have known about Oberg <laughs> for a long time. Uh, you know, one one stat that I'm going to focus on this week is the 150 to 175 175 yard bucket, which is uh, closely correlated to success at this course. Uh, Oberg is second in that category behind only Scotty Scheffler. So I think he's a great player. Well, listen, I saw you send over your guy that you like in this top range. I actually have a wager on him around 35 to 1. So can you tell me what do you like about Will Zalatoris? And mm -hmm. is he in a good position to win his second PGA Tour event? I think he's in an okay position. You know, for DFS purposes, I, I think that a lot of the roster ship will move away from Zalatoris because there are so many good options in this field uh, as, a, as a limited field event. Uh, Zalatoris is 9,000 on DraftKings this week. I think that's a good price point for him. He, that's the 12th highest overall among players in this field. Uh, he's 10th in in, the, in this field in driving accuracy, which is, as you know, critically important on this course. Keep it in the fairway. Keep it away from trouble. The tree-lined uh, uh, fairways and, and rough are you know, huge trouble for guys. So he's very accurate off the tee. Ninth in strokes gained on approach. And just last week of the Masters, he tied for ninth. He was fourth best on approach at Augusta. Uh, so he comes into this tournament, I think, with really good form. He's not necessarily very long, at least this year. Maybe it's the back injury. I'm not sure. But the accuracy is there, and that's what's important in this tournament. 
It was really nice to see Zalatoris actually making some putts at Augusta. Yeah. Of course, that's, you know, historically is tough to put on, especially after coming off of Houston where he just couldn't make a single thing. Um, I want to talk about a guy who is giving me gray hairs. Can I get gray hairs while having the blue hair? I don't They're think so. Out, I, think. I, think the, I think the blue drowns out the gray. I think you got it right. <laughs> Turning the blues gray, it's Cam Young. I've been on Cam Young twice this year, and I start to think about, what is my price point where I can live with the heartache, live with the amount of times where he comes close and doesn't win? He was a runner-up at Valspar. I didn't bet him until I bet him live. And then when the number drops to minus 200, I'm counting my money. But you know, as the old saying goes, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Okay. Well, I was the bad farmer who was counting all these chickens, and they're still in their eggs, and half of them didn't even hatch. That was me with Cam Young. But I'm going back. Why? Because he's 33 to 1. I theoretically can bet him 32 times mm -hmm. this season and still make money if he wins one at this price. If we remember back to 2022, I was on him first round leader and I don't play that market that often, but he had a, a favorable tee time. He could dominate this course because it's only like 7,200 yards and he's great off the tee, great on approach and good with his wedges. Goes out there, eight under, first round leader. I'm jumping up and down. I go and live bet him to win the tournament. I don't know what I was thinking. He goes the next day, two over par. Yeah, I think he got a little excited. It's hard to follow up strong rounds like that. I'm taking all this negative talk about Cam Young and pushing it to the side. Because what has happened with Cam Young is he's consistently gotten better. Um, I was watching a, a show uh, done by, by Rick Rungood. I wanted to just give him a shout out for this because it made me think about Cam Young when he struggles – it's one of those he just builds piece by piece. And many don't know Cam Young's dad, teaching pro, probably taught him, hey, Cam Young, let's just do this a little bit brick by brick, get better and get better. Well, runner-up finish at Valspar, top 10 at the Masters, mm -hmm. and of course, gaining a ton, a ton of strokes on approach. So at 33 to 1, Denny, I have no problems betting Cam Young. You know what? I'm confident that one day uh, Cam Young will win a tournament. And uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it's this Sunday. Well, who knows? Well, listen, one day, um, we don't talk about one day. I think there's going to be a guy named Tom Kim who's going to get back to form. I bet Tom Kim at 100 to 1 price dissipated. I literally had to land my flight in Tennessee, play it on a legal book. <laughs> By the time I get back to Orlando, I think my flight was like two hours. By the time I get back to Orlando, the price is gone. But talking about uh, Tom Kim, tell me what you like about him and – Let's talk about how his recent struggles are kind of something we can put in the, the rear view mirror. Yeah. So Tom Kim has been somewhat of a disaster on uh, approach ball striking in general. Um, we saw him sort of revive that part of his game last week uh, at the, at the masters. Um, he was top 20 uh, in ball striking, uh, including on approach and approach numbers are so important this week in that 150 to 175 range last week. He, he was solid, not spectacular. But I think that we are seeing maybe maybe a turning tide on Tom Kim. And honestly, he's played so poorly through most of this year and late last year that I, I think that DFS players will largely just be off of him. Just say, OK, I'm skipping past him in this line. I'm going somewhere else. I'm going you know, below him, just above him. He's in a weird price point. But I, I do think that Tom Kim is a, a good contra contrarian type play in large field DFS tournaments this week on DraftKings. Funny Tom Kim story. I was uh, at Arnold Palmer for the pro am, and Tom Kim had hit his drive. Now the guys in front, the guys like the the amateurs playing with him, hit their drives, and his caddy was nowhere to be found. Tom Kim said, "Screw it, put the bag on his back, <laughs> carried it down the fairway." Not many pros would do that. He is definitely a people person and a really likable, a really likable player. Um, Denny, I am going back to Wyndham Clark. Okay, um, and I think the price is a little disrespectful. Uh, 33 to one to win this tournament. I know he had the back issues, right? He, and he talked about his back's a little tight. He threw out his back, but I didn't really see any change off the tee, which I would expect. He was ripping the ball, very high average ball speed. So mm -hmm. it made me feel like it's one of the things that kind of worked itself out. Yes. Controversial take talking about live golfers only play 54 holes. He has more holes to get back into contention and ends up missing the cut at the masters. I'm okay with that. Masters debutante missing the cut, struggling at Augusta, probably one of the most difficult weather conditions we've had at Augusta in quite some time. Yeah. I'm going back to him. We cannot forget that this guy has already won a major championship. We cannot forget that this guy is already a three-time winner on the PGA Tour. We cannot forget that this guy has two runner-up finishes to the best golfer on the planet, and that's Scotty Scheffler. Yet, he's 33-1. to 1. 
absolutely outrageous. I know it's not a great course fit. Dude sprays the ball off the tee. That's totally fine with me. When I saw this price, it was something that I had to bet. Why? Because when you have a sprayer, a guy who's spraying off the tee, you want to see what, what rough conditions are going to be. We know that it's tree-lined fairways, mm -hmm. but how's the rough? Rough is going to be down, cut down almost two inches from last mm -hmm. year. I saw that in the superintendent notes, which is really important to know. And the guy's just super talented. So at 33 to one, I can live with him yeah. just coming in contention and not winning. Yeah. With that club head speed in short rough, who cares? Yeah. Just yeah. swing for the fences with Wyndham Clark. Cause that's what he does. He swings for the fences. I want to ask you um, when Lucas Glover yeah. went on that crazy run and, and won any tournaments, did you have any action on him? Did you get a piece of him? I did a little bit, uh, not as much as I wanted, but he was coming around on a, on a lot of categories and yeah. then he switched to the long putter and things really turned around. He became suddenly the greatest golfer in the world for a couple weeks there. Uh, but yeah, I, I think this week Glover is uh, like a, a great fit for, for this course, 6,800 on DraftKings. I will say I'm going to, I'm going to look at the roster ship numbers on Wednesday to make sure that he's not super chalky because I think there is a chance that that happens. I don't know if I'm going to eat the Lucas Glover chalk is what I'm saying. But if he's not chalky, I'm in because Lucas Glover last week, he was top five in dri driving accuracy, uh, or it, he is top five in dri driving accuracy in this field, 17th in proximity on shots between 150 and 175. Uh, he did well last week at the Masters. He's gained strokes on approach in nine of 10 events this season. Uh, so yeah, he's as reliable as it gets. He's a good wedge player. That'll prove significant here. Uh, so if he can just be average with the putter, I think that he's a great kind of kind of cost saver for DFS purposes. You can you can stack two, two maybe even three high price golfers if you go with a Glover or another low cost option. Thinking about Glover at sixty eight hundred and his ability to pop with the flat stick, he did it last year where he didn't have any like kind of metrics that were like, oh dude, I'm just gonna go berserk with the putter in this right. this month uh, span of golf, and he did. So if he, you know he has that in in, in his repertoire. It's it's a viable option at this price. Um, Come on, Lucas. Lucas, make make some make just like two or three putts this week, and and you'll be good, dude. I I literally think that Lucas Glover can can just go nuts and have another couple wins. And when you're getting someone at such a low price, it's pretty phenomenal. But Denny, uh, we have to talk about the LPGA because yeah. uh, Nelly Corda is doing something that hasn't been done uh, since 2008. She is looking to win her fifth consecutive tournament and five consecutive starts at the Chevron championship, the LPGA tours first major of the season to put this in perspective, the last golfer to enter a major with four straight wins and four starts Annika Sorenstam. And that was, you know, feels like light years ago. There's probably people watching this stream aren't even old enough to know Annika <laughs> Sorenstam is, um, yeah. she played well here last year, finished T three. Um, she's plus 500 Scotty range, right? Next closest, to her, Brooke Henderson at plus 2,800, Lydia Ko plus 2,800, and Ro Zhang at 30 to 1. Are you buying in it at 5 to 1? Are you going to look anywhere else to kind of spray the board? I mean, she, uh, Nelly Corda is a is an uh, iron shot making machine this year. Yeah. He's, she's always playing from the fairway, and uh, she's second in greens and regulation this season. So she's always putting her, herself in position uh, to shoot low scores. I just don't see that that changing. Uh, she's kind of Scotty ish, you know, Scotty Scheffler ish yeah. right now, as far as being a machine from T to green, I think that continues this week. It's hard. It's hard to bet against her. Very hard to bet against her. And when, whenever I want to fade a big favorite, I have to look at the people, the players around yeah. them. And I just couldn't find someone who I was really confident at their price. Maybe Rojang, even with a little bit of layoff, going back to take classes at Stanford, maybe, but just Nelly Cordes, long off the tee, great ball striker. There's gonna anytime there's wind and weather issues, just like they had at a match play, mm -hmm. you want a golfer to be a great ball striker, and that's exactly what Nelly Cordes is. I'm gonna be rooting for her. I might just put down a little unit on it, just just to kind of have some celebratory action. Should she accomplish this feat and win five consecutive tournaments, um, Denny, I want to thank you because. Yeah. You know, being able to talk golf with someone <laughs> and display our passion for the game is something that That's I am fun. super excited about. And I, I'm hoping that we continue to make good plays and good money. Absolutely. Keep, yeah, keep it locked here. We'll be here every week. And uh, Brad, you're doing a great job with the bets. I'm hoping to bring home some DFS money for the folks. We'll keep it going. Yeah, man. Uh, anybody watching, don't forget to check out NBCSports.com for more information to help you out with your wagers.
Don't forget to rate and subscribe. For Denny Carter, I'm Brad Thomas. Best of luck.